Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so I wanted to do a video series on Kubernetes security. So this would be like a three or four video uh, series, uh, just talking about Kubernetes securities. In this video, I'm going to talk about service accounts. Uh, so if you know, and by the way, before I proceed, uh, I'm using a cluster or playground cluster provided by Killer Coda. Uh, they have not sponsored this video. I'm just telling you that you can also use the, them, Killer Coda or Catacoda. Uh, they give you playground cluster so you don't actually have to build your own clusters uh, i chose killer coda because it was running a recent version of uh, kubernetes uh, catacoda was running a very old version so i went with killer coda right they're very similar all right moving on so i mean as a user when you have to authenticate or authorize with uh, kubernetes api server uh, you we use certificates right it's mostly certificate based authentication and then you have your authentication and authorization plugins which parse your requests and basically do the authentication and authorization, right? Uh, since Kubernetes does not uh, uh, store any user information, it just authorize, uh, authenticates and authorizes. That's why you cannot uh, create users in Kubernetes cluster, like you cannot do a kubectl create user, right? That you can't do. Uh, service accounts, uh, if I have to give you an, an analogy, uh, they are very similar to like roles in AWS, right? IAM roles. So if your applications, say, say you're running an application in a pod, and that requires uh, some kind of access to your cluster. So you do that uh, using service account. So service accounts are actually Kubernetes constructs. So you can actually do a kubectl create a service account, right? And how do we do that? So uh, let's, let's get started. So by default, when you create a cluster, you actually get a, a default uh, service account um, in the default namespace, right? If I do just, so I'm in the default namespace, you can see the name of the service account. SA is a short form for service account. You can do SA or you can write service account completely. So default service account exists. And if you create any pod, uh, say if I run, say, what do you um, I forgot all the commands. <laughs> kubectl run, I'll run web name or uh, not name image and I'm going to run nginx right so pod is created kubectl get pod uh, okay let's let's just wait for it to okay it's running now we'll just do a describe and we'll just scroll up to see a mount right and you can see it has mounted a file uh, sorry, a directory basically where run secrets kubernetes.io service accounts, right? So let's check what's inside this uh, directory. So let me clear the screen and we can do kubectl exec web. And I want to do an ls on this directory. So you have CACRT namespace and token. So this token is what uh, your pod will use to authenticate and authorize with uh, the API server. Uh, this default uh, service account actually has no right, right? I mean, you cannot do anything. Your pod cannot do anything. Let's just look at the token as well before we proceed. And a token. And let's just cat it out. So you'll see cat so this is the token basically which it passes to the api server right uh, before getting i mean going ahead uh, if i want to show you one more thing which is kubectl so when i do kubectl get sa default you can see it it shows that there is one secret right so if i do kubectl get secrets so there is one secret already present right and if I want to do a describe, kubectl describe secret and this one. So this is the basically the token from, uh, this is the token which is actually going into your pod, right? And if, if, you've, if you've worked with Kubernetes, you know you can mount secrets, right? Uh, onto pods. So this is, uh, this is how basically service accounts work, right? clear the screen so 
and yeah i told you that you cannot uh, do any because your pod if you and by default uh, when you create a pod and there is and you cannot and you do not attach any service account to it uh, by default it gets a default service account so and one pod can only get one service account but multiple pods can have uh, like one service account right so it's it's like that kind of relationship so one pod i mean to one pod you can only attach one service account but one service account can be attached to multiple pods so that that's how it works and uh, in order to show that uh, you cannot your pod your application basically cannot do using uh, do anything using this uh, service account uh, we can do kubectl auth right so kubectl auth and and then what we want to do it's like can i and then i want to say see if i can create pods as a service account which is default and in order to pass the service account name you need to do system colon service account colon namespace which is default and then the name of the service account which is again default and you can see it's saying no we cannot do that and if let's see if we can just let's list the pods list and it's it's a no again right so now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to create a custom uh, service account and i'll show you how you can basically attach policies i mean you can actually give it access to say create pods or list pods right and and that is something to do with role and role binding so that concept would also be covered i mean i'll do a separate video for roles and role binding but i'll cover some basic introduction in this as well. so first thing uh, since i told you it's a it's a kubernetes construct you can simply do kubectl uh, create service account and i'll name this as deploy and it is created now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to create a role and a role binding so role is where i'm going to define the policies the kind of access this is going to this service account is going to have or that role is going to have and then i'm going to create a role binding which will actually bind this service account to that particular role right uh, it might be confusing it might be sounding confusing but when i'll do probably you'll get a better idea so i'll create kubectl create role and i'll call it deploy role right and then i want to give it some verb which should be equal to say create and get and list right i want to give it 3 and then i want to decide on the resources resource equal and i just want to give it access to pods right and my role is created so let me clear the screen now i'm going to create a role binding kubectl create role binding and this will be deploy bind this will be the name of the role binding and then i would give it role which would be deploy role right this was the name of my role i believe and then i'm going to give it service account and service account would be deploy okay so you can see i mean just the name of service account will not do it needs in the proper format which is namespace and the name right so since the name in namespace is default i can just do this and my role binding is uh, created let's just do kubectl describe role binding and deploy bind so you can see the role name is deploy role and it is bounded to subject which is service account 
and the name of the service account is deploy and it's in the default uh, namespace, right? Similarly, if I do kubectl describe a role and role name was deploy role, you would see the kind of access this role has. So you can create get list pods, right? Using this role. So now we have, uh, and in order to create a pod, basically uh, to use this uh, service account, uh, it's very simple in the spec uh, definition. You can just, I'll, I'll just show you, right? Why, why am I telling it? So let's do kubectl. First, I'm going to show you the auth command, uh, whether I can do the stuff I've mentioned using the service account. So kubectl auth, can I create pods? as system colon service account colon default colon deploy and you can see I can I'm getting a yes because I can this service account actually has access to create pods and in the same way I can check for list yes and let's see if we have access to delete because we didn't give it delete access. So let's just check and delete is no, right? So that's that actually proves that our service account actually has access to create uh, uh, and list and get the pods, but it cannot delete the pods. Now let's, uh, let me show you how you put a, a service account in, I mean, when you want to create a pod. So kubectl run and I will run web2 hyphen hyphen image nginx hyphen hyphen dry run yaml and I'll just put it to web2.yaml and let's go into web2.yaml so in order to put the service account you put it under the spec and you do it like service account name and it would be deploy right let's get rid of any information which is not required like this all right and if i do kubectl apply f web2.yaml and pod should be created and it is running and you can do a describe and check uh, uh, right so yeah that's pretty much for this video that's what i wanted to cover service accounts uh, we'll cover role role binding cluster role and cluster binding in the upcoming videos uh, i hope you like this video please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching